We're going to start with a brief video from Twin Global 2018, where Dr. Jeffrey Ling introduced something pretty darn compelling that they were working on. And then they're going to come out, Dr. Ling and Chip Bailey are going to come out and talk about what the heck is going on with on-demand pharmaceuticals. So if we could roll the video. You come back and think about the problem. You said, why I don't have this generic medication? And it's because of there was a drug shortage. Uh, it's, a, it's a big logistics train to get to me, blah, blah, blah. So you say to yourself, how do I change this paradigm? And it's easy. Why don't I just make the doggone thing myself? I mean, I have a PhD in medicinal chemistry. Just give me a chemistry set. I'll make the doggone thing myself. You know? And why not? Why not? And so what you see here is just that. These, this machine that you're looking at right now is half the size of this podium. And there's three elements to it. The bottom parts, as you can see, are empty. And you, you stack them up, they come out to be the size of your home refrigerator. That machine is a chemistry set. It works a lot like the new soda machines you use at the Fuddruckers. You know, you push a button, and it squirts out some juice. It's, you know, some cherry Coke. And it pushes out some Sprite. It pushes out some orange. And next you know, you, you got your own soda, right? It works just like that. Bunch of pumps and valves. It's nothing super special. It's, in fact, idiotically simple. It's just a bunch of pumps and valves. Use a bunch of core, simple chem chemicals that you just mix together. Because after all, most generic medications are organic. So we just made out carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So in principle, if you had a, bowl, uh, a pencil and an egg, you can make anything you want. Great. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jeffrey Ling and Chip Bailey, join me on stage. How many of you were there in 2018 when he did this? Uh, it still resonates. I use this in class all the time. You guys don't like me? Did I not shower this morning? Come on, <laughs> over here, Jeffrey. Great. So, uh, Jeffrey, this became, and by the way, it, I didn't set this up for those of us who are new. You served in the U.S. military as a medical doctor in the Army for 25? 21 years. 21 years. Six tours of duty in the Middle yep. East. Um, and thank you so much for that service. But through this process, you saw a challenge, which is shortages of drugs. But you practice at Johns Hopkins. I do. Here in the US. You have drug shortages in the US. And that's where this came from. Right? Absolutely. So we saw the basic idea. You've, you've, you've carried it forward. Give us the brief picture. Where are you today? We have the machine. Yes. We've uh, done our first two FDA submissions. And um, we have uh, done what we were tasked to do and more. So what happened between 2018 and now, of course, was something called COVID. And that really uh, brought to light the supply chain issues. One of the biggest things that was elucidated that wasn't appreciated by the civilians before, but certainly was appreciated by the military, was the dependency on key starting materials. So um, the issue of when President Trump came and said, we will make our own active pharmaceutical agreements in the United States, that sounds great. And so you realize that the starting materials come from the same place, China and India, predominantly China. So for the United States military, they cannot be dependent on a potential peer adversary. That is just not tenable. So uh, we were already starting to do what we call American-made precursors. That is, can you make from earlier starting materials, raw chemicals, things you dig out of the ground, turn them into the key starting materials that then become the active pharmaceutical ingredient that becomes the drug. That model was something that we were tasked to do in 2018, and we, we largely succeeded. Uh, because it's chemistry. It, it's, it's more of the same, essentially. But not only did you succeed in the lab with this little experimental thing, you've now got machines that are working, that are going through yes. FDA yes. process to be used in civilian environments, yes. potentially all over the world. And there was a, a little bit of news earlier this year about your viability as a company. I think you raised a little bit of money uh, what was it, 50,000 bucks, or what did what'd you raise? So uh, private money, we haven't raised very much. We raised $10 million. Um, yeah, not very much. Right. Uh, and? Well, relative to what you folks are used to. Sure. That's a lot of money for a guy like me, you got to understand. Sure. I was in the Army, right? So yeah. Yeah. you guys. That, that's, that's a rounding a error. Yeah, for yeah. you guys, that's dust. But, right. uh, but the United States <laughs> government, on the other hand, has invested $74 million into us. So that is uh, really how we've been doing it, is because the support of 
quite frankly, the Department of Defense. Right, right. And that's not only for defense preparedness for the country, but it's pretty easy to see how this will cascade across the entire health system, right. not only in the U.S., but in developing countries. In the same presentation, Dr. Ling pointed out, there are many places in the world that don't have access to even generic drugs. Imagine if they had these little printer-sized things in, you mentioned the Congo, you mentioned uh, Afghanistan, wherever in the world, how that proximity of production can transform the mind, I mean, just rip apart the old model. Well, I think that there's, a, there's always a question of when you want to do something like delivery of, of medical care for um, any population, uh, one way is you can have them dependent on you. Yes. If you're a large pharma and you're giving them drugs, even if you're not selling, just giving it to them, that's welfare. Mm -hmm. If you teach them how to make the drugs and you give them the, the tools to make their own drugs, Absolutely. that's liberation. I want to add. I want to add that a really exciting thing from a mo when you start to extrapolate this out. The shelf life of pharmaceuticals is two or three years. You got to throw them out, right? Make new ones. What's what are the components? Car carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. What's the shelf life of carbon, doctor? Well, uh, it's, it's older than the Earth. Yeah. <laughs> Forever. Forever. Think about how this transforms, transcends all the models and all the, all the numbers we've done for years and changes the whole equation. Now, Chip, yeah. I love you, my, my friend, <laughs> but what the heck are you doing you. here? Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, it, it, what doesn't fit in this picture? No, right? no, no. Yeah. I'm um, kidding. You, you fit in a big way. Tell us how you got involved with on demand pharmaceuticals and, and what's been your experience so far? It was the, taking it off the video, why not? Yeah. <laughs> and also blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. You had me yeah. a blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I think uh, it's interesting when Lindsay was talking earlier about trying to take skill sets from people and apply it in a uh, very positive way, yeah. uh, a planet standpoint and our earth. And I was going through my own sort of metamorphosis. My children had really challenged me. I'd spent 30 years in financial services and I kept thinking about like, what am I gonna do next? And they kept saying, why are you doing what you're doing? And could you do something different? And is what you're doing really helpful? And I had to sort of really- Meanwhile, you're paying for college. Correct. And they're sleeping on the couch. And Correct. okay, all right, yeah. Yes, I and it. I was very quick yeah. to point that out, that all of this around you, in, in terms of what you're using to appoint and maybe a little bit judge, Yes. Uh, right. I said, does not come for free. Yeah. So, uh, but it was, an, it was a good, it was actually meaningful and simultaneous with my own sort of, 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 of challenging of myself, how you want to contribute, can you do something differently? And I mean, quite frankly, I think I kind of quasi-stalked you. And uh, You met at Twin, you I saw this guy, twin. and I, I saw you in the, in the break after accosting the doctor. Exactly, well, <laughs> is Brian Collins here? Uh, so Brian had us do this exercise of drive, uh, drawing the person next to you, the profile, and I happened to be sitting next to him. And so, you know, I think because I made him look like Brad Pitt, he was very excited. Yeah, so that's right. <laughs> so he was like, well, great. this is really great. But on top of that, I just said, hey, I'm really trying to think about my next, you know, where does my life take me? Can I be helpful? I've got a skill set of running businesses. Can I be helpful to you in any way? So we just kept talking. And yeah. I went met him in D.C. I met him in Boston. I met at you in New York. And then, you know, when he sort of, uh, ODP got sort of advanced, he said, can you be helpful to me in the context of being an advisor to business? And I'm like, absolutely. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, there, there are a few ventures I'm more excited about and pulling for, not only because how brilliant it is, but also because of the, the personalities involved. Um, this is an example of something that literally can change the world and not in the long-term future. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ling, Chip Bailey, thanks so much for what you're doing, and we can't wait to hear the updates. Yeah, thanks.